Hello there, welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host Agostino Zynga and this is episode number 631, that's 631 of the Agostino Zynga show, I hope you are doing well wherever this blood club podcast may be finding you, I hope you are doing good, how am I, you know, all well, all things considered, I've been absolutely smashing the fasting lately, I've been doing a good old, let's say, 16-4 which has been pretty decent. No, actually, I've been doing 18.6. Is that what I'm doing? 18.6 or 18.4? Let me check my phone. I'm not sure what I'm actually doing when it comes to the fasting. So let me just be doubly sure and make sure that I'm telling you the accurate information. But I've been fasting for like 15 hours plus every single day. And it's been absolutely brilliant. The only thing that's bad is that your mouth gets gummy and you have to kind of remember to drink loads of water so you don't have stinky, winky, bad breath. But so far, it's been pretty decent, as you can see from my little zero app there. The only days that I don't do anything particular is definitely on the Sundays. But for the most part, I kind of stick with my fasting schedule. And it's been pretty easy to kind of keep on top of, I'm not going to lie. Let me see if I can find out which one I'm on. Uh, edit, yeah, I'm on, sorry, I'm on 18, what am I, 18.4? I guess, is it 18.4? I guess that must be the one I'm on. Surely it's the one I'm on. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, I'm on. I'm on 18.6 at the moment. So I've got an 18 hour fasting window and then six hours to eat. And it's been pretty decent. I'm not going to, especially in the winter months, I don't really like to be overly stuffed. I like to be warm, which is why I've got this North Face on inside. And I also like to, you know, keep warm by just drinking loads of tea and having some coffees and stuff. But the last thing I want to be doing is filling my body up with absolute food and feeling all drowsy and not being able to move and stuff. That's not really a good vibe for me. I'd rather not do that. But it's been nice because for the most part, all I've been doing is going to the gym and cycling there, which has not been too tough. So the weird thing has been, I've only been going outside really to go to the gym. I haven't really been out in a while in terms of a club night. I think towards the end of the year, usually club nights sort of die down in terms of good events. I get a feeling that some DJs, especially if you've been touring, let's imagine the majority of the year, you'd probably try and wind down and hang out with your family who you, you know, actively try to run away from hopefully between the months of like november to maybe early january and then you start it back up again but i imagine you know especially with festivals nowadays they start super early you know they, they've got festivals out there that i'm pretty sure start in january also if you want to go to one so for some reason the end of the year is always a bit dead overall um this year probably being one of the deadest ones obviously with all brexit being in there as well so a lot of the you know um ease of kind of coming over here if you're from europe is definitely gone and obviously vice versa but um, overall there's still some decent things I can probably check out this weekend I'm probably gonna have to keep my eye on but so far I'm a little bit stumped in terms of what I want to do this weekend because I know I want to party and shake my little rumper somewhere and put my hands in the air but it might be beneficial just to go to Pirate Studios and make sure that I kind of you know wrap in a little mix session so I can make sure that I'm practicing and showcasing my skills so hopefully someone from Bergheim will book me one day you can only dream you can only dream talking about playing gigs and recording stuff there's this really interesting article that i just stumbled across on mixmag that i thought was absolutely hilarious and definitely spoke to my experience trying to get myself on that ladder to becoming a semi-professional soon to be professional dj and this is the headline courtesy of mixmag it says 65 percent of djs say they don't play their favorite music at gigs new data uncovered by pirate shows the listening habits of artists will help from spotify wrapped now this is something that i'm not surprised by one of my main sort of um one of my main kind of like uh objectives i did when i decided to kind of go a little bit heavy and start djing for real because i obviously been doing it for a while over like 10 years and whatnot but in terms of actually trying to get booked in places one of the things i wanted to do is that I knew I was competent enough to mix two tracks together. The whole like being able to beat match and stuff was never really a big issue for me. I never really saw it as an issue or a problem. I could always kind of get that stuff sorted. It was never going to be something that I was going to be stressing over too much when it came to all that sort of stuff. The thing that I was always worried about more so was just the ability to go and play places because I know more than anybody, especially in a place like London, there's probably an overabundance. We're probably fully stocked and, um, 
we're probably um, way over capacity when it comes to DJs. I'm sure most people who listen to this podcast probably have friends within their own circle who DJ from time to time in different places. Or if you needed to book somebody for an emergency disco somewhere, and I mean an emergency disco, you could probably find five people in your contact list right now that you could probably recommend and they could absolutely shell it and smash whatever gig that you were recommended them for. So the competition out there is absolutely crazy. And there's obviously a limited amount of clubs in the UK, especially in London. Um, clubs are closing all the time. It's hard to keep them afloat, especially with our real crazy draconian drinking laws and opening hours and noise complaints and council issues. There's just too many DJs are not in a place for them to play. So it gets hard. And it's even harder when you're in my kind of hipster um, you know, niche or techno scene, whatever it may be, because there's only a small select group of clubs that play that sort of music. There's only a small select group of promoters that put on those nights. So you have to get, you know, friendly with them. And usually those kind of people only book their friends with the exception of maybe getting some good guessing, which makes a lot of sense. So you go seeing how hard it is to kind of get in. So my kind of objective when I set out to try and kind of get myself up the ladder was to earn my chops playing in front of an audience, like actually playing in front of real people. So I had this notion in my head that, hey, you know, playing for a hipster kind of scene crowd is easy because essentially you're playing to the crowd. Like they know they're always going to be, you know, if you're playing at list, for instance, like a fold, more likely than not, if you're able to play there, you most likely get what they're about. And it's unlikely you have a poor set because you get what that kind of crowd wants and they're really up for anything. So they're going to be really enjoying it as long as it's not commercial and cheesy stuff. But then I was thinking to myself that it's probably harder to play like in a generic place, like an XOYO, because it's such a commercial mix of a commercial underground niche type of audience. Everybody kind of goes there like, you know, everyday normies and whatnot, that you kind of have to have your wits about you to be able to kind of guide that crowd and hold their attention. So my idea was to go and play these local bars and clubs and try and earn my chops that way and try and play in front of an audience which is great because you know it's all well and good streaming and whatnot online but being able to actually play in front of an audience and read their vibe and see if you can kind of take them on a journey is always something that you know you shouldn't kind of scoff at so I did that for a long time and I think even though maybe career-wise it didn't get me closer to eventually playing at these types of places that I would like to go and play at the folds and the Bergheins and stuff in the future it did improve my ability to DJ in terms of you know just give me an empty room or give me a room with just some generic people a mix of people from all over the place and tell me to play for an hour and i'm definitely going to get them dancing whereas not everybody can do that and not everybody probably want to do that but i found that really a bit a better test of your actual ability to dj because you're playing for regular people and scenes and whatever it may be think of like a really cool trendy bar club somewhere in whatever area you're in that kind of service or maybe in a smaller town that has to service the needs of like you know a mum that's coming out for just a night out because you know she doesn't really get a chance to go out with drinks with her friends maybe some kids from a local uni maybe some couple allowed to play for a local football team all the type of people that I was kind of thinking in my head is like avatars of like okay cool how would I get them to dance and usually unfortunately for me it was usually playing music that I probably wouldn't you know play out anywhere else or maybe music that I probably don't listen to day to day and that was maybe an excruciating part of it but being a DJ I feel like you have to be a you know you have to obviously be a lover of music and me being that kind of guy I found it easy to kind of play that sort of stuff but I could also understand why I, when I did it why it could be quite soul crushing work because you're essentially having to play for people who you don't really want to be playing for you're going to be playing music that you don't really enjoy yourself just for the hope that it will allow you to get it will kind of build you up and you know improve your skills and maybe there's an off chance that somebody might see you and get you on another platform or in another space that might be of high prestige and you can take it from there so it's a little bit of a weird place to be and so there's two options either you go directly to the niche thing and just stick to playing for people that you know look like you and are into the same stuff which again is a very um, oversaturated market and there's too many people doing it and not enough spaces to go and play okay it's a challenge or you go the other way and try and kind of come around the long way around and try and play them around for the normies and then hope maybe someone from the other grand scene would want to play you would want to book you sorry which is unlikely but you know those are two options so i'm not really surprised by this um report but i think it's really interesting let me read it 
65% of DJs don't play their favorite music at gigs, according to a new survey by Pirate. Working with data from Spotify's end of year summary, Spotify wrapped Pirate asked 260 DJs from across the UK for their 2022 results, along with the genre of music they typically play at gigs. Results show that 65% of DJs aren't playing their favorite tracks behind the decks. Keeping the findings anonymous, the survey found that techno DJs with, um, with The Who was a man what found a techno DJ with the who was among their top artists in 2022 whilst jungle DJ had been rinsing Lana Del Rey this makes a lot of sense though because they're complete opposites aren't they in terms of sonically and for me personally I tend to like listen to a lot of heavy metal a lot of R&B when I'm in the gym but I don't necessarily listen to it day to day apart from that it's specifically for the gym but do I go to a lot of metal shows not really do I go to a lot of R&B shows not really so I like to have that kind of difference. And usually sometimes if I'm going to like a techno night, one of the main things I like to listen to is R&B or country, right? I'll just put on something completely opposite of what I'm going to go here just to kind of get me in a good vibe. But then when I get there, I want to hear boom, 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 boom. So it's that kind of vibe. And I find it interesting because I think a lot of people online, especially, there's a lot of snobbery when it comes to music. There's a lot of people who kind of, you know, scoff at the idea of Drake being the best artist in the world, sorry, the best rapper in the world, or whatever, well, maybe you're one of the biggest musicians out there. But the facts are that a lot of people listen to that guy. Like you go on, you know, you go on your early commute and you just have a little peek at somebody's phone and you'll see what the normies actually listen to day to day. And it's the things that are the most popular. Those are what they're playing. You know, they're streaming that through their iPhone. Sorry, they're streaming that via YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, whatever it may be. And they're listening to those people again and again and again. And I know people who sometimes have a playlist of like 10 tracks that they just repeat every single day. They don't even try to listen to new stuff. They've got their stuff that they know works for them, the stuff that gets them in a good mood for the morning, the stuff they can play when they're you know eating their lunch, the stuff they can play on the way home, stuff they can play on the way out. And that's all they play again and again and again. And usually it's not the most, you know, forward thinking, avant-garde, genre pushing type of stuff. It's just the normie stuff that you see people getting awards for that makes you think, oh my God, how's this person always getting awards and they're terrible? No, no, they're not terrible. A lot of people enjoy what they do. And I'd imagine it's even more common in the DJ scene. I'd imagine there's probably a lot of DJs, similar to like footballers. You know, you hear all these professional footballers who say they don't watch football at all outside of when they play or when they have to do like, you know, they have to study or they have to analyze opponents for the next game, but they don't actually sit down in the pub or at home and watch games. If anything, when they're outside of football, they want to do anything apart from being involved in football, which I think is maybe similar to DJs. I wouldn't be surprised if the biggest techno DJ you know doesn't just sit at home listening to flipping techno all the flipping day. They may be watching crappy reality TV. They may be just, you know, playing video games, whatever it may be. I'm sure that there's exists where you want to just completely turn off from those type of things, which may explain as well why those shows are really popular. It continues. Likewise, the data showed that one house DJ discovered their most listened genre of the year was Afropop. Pirate Survey also found that um, DJ, 63% of DJs state that their taste in music changes with their surroundings. A UK-based DJ said, I wake up to shoegaze, dream pop every morning. During the day, I listen to soft acoustic jazz records and tune into my local station, which is true. I've got, I had this app at the moment before that I deleted, but I had this app that I used to use. That was, um, I think it was like a world radio app and you could basically select a location and it'd give you the local radio station that whatever it was playing and it was pretty cool because you got to you know hear different things like reggaeton in parts of south america and whatnot and other bits of euro pop in places in europe and it kind of gave you that cause, but it was a way to like play something different that maybe wasn't on your iphone or wasn't on your library and that was a good way to kind of go about things but like he like he said he listens to stuff specifically in the morning that's different and in the afternoon that's different but it's nowhere near close to what he plays out which is i think testament to a good DJ also to be well rounded in that way and also you know you can can't you can't have too much you can have too much of a good thing. That's what you can. You can have too much of a good thing. It continues at night listen to lyrically powerful music, Nick Cave, um K Tempest or fully emotive electronic music like Burial, Ross from Friends, etc. In the clubs, mostly UKG baseline stuff with the odd hyper pop banger. Most DJs don't use the streaming service Spotify, but 75% said that they knew music the DJ sets to praise sorry. Most DJs 
don't just use streaming services Spotify, but 75% said they find new music in DJ sets with praising SoundCloud, with many praising SoundCloud. And what DJ said in the report, I mainly just use SoundCloud to find new music. The related tracks section is great. They also have a station section that generates a list of tunes based on your listened to before. Beyond streaming, 60% of DJs said that they find new music through friends. Check out Paris for a report here. Yeah, I agree with all this. I think that's just con- that's the common journey that most DJs go on. I don't think most DJs when they start playing play the music that they actually uh listen to or the stuff that they really want to play in places you kind of have to for lack of a better term um you know pay your dues and work your way up and then little by little you get the privilege and the opportunity to play what you want which is why sometimes when you go when i go to gigs anyway one of the things i'm always kind of marvel at it's like man it must be amazing in it to be dixon and just be playing this melodic slow hypnotizing um you know house music for like four plus hours and people just love it they don't want anything else they don't want you to play no beyonce no rihanna they just want you to play that for like four plus hours you think of someone like a harvey for instance right he's playing really cheesy um you know disco and you know some rock and so whatever it may be just going on weird you know um, eccentric kind of flipping um journey and everyone's kind of there with him whereas if it was me and i played too many afrobeat tunes in a particular place people are gonna start giving you the side air or they'll leave and go back to their seats you play too much you know too much sim pop and people maybe you'll go a bit too crazy i don't know there's all these little adjustments you have to make when you're not that well known it just is part of the process i guess isn't it? it's kind of that weird part of the process then this other story of mix mag that i thought was absolutely hilarious only because i remember reading about a similar story happening in the bergheim recently with the dj um what's his name etap kyle i read somewhere that he had a similar sort of issue this is courtesy of mixed mag and it says any mac calls for the return of stolen usbs there'll be no repercussions i just want the music back bless her in it absolutely crazy they got a, sh- a picture of her looking kind of sad as well journalism this is a mess it says annie mac has had her usbs which contain decades worth of music stolen from her booth of her own club night last week um taken on december 9th the former bbc one radio dj is requesting the person to return the usbs and she states there'll be no repercussions mac had been djing at here london as part of her new club night series before midnight which was designed for people who need sleep so she puts together this club night you know it's in the it's in the flipping a hint is in the flipping name of it before midnight to allow people who maybe don't have the ability to go out and stay after midnight to have the ability to skank out have some fun so essentially like a roaming print works it's been getting some rave reviews you know i'm not really into any mac at what she plays but she seems to be a real um student of the game kind of paid her dues has been in the industry for a long long time something a lot of people rate and have a lot of good feelings about and i generally do get the vibe that she's quite well liked in general i feel like this sort of stuff happens to people who maybe people don't really like too much i don't know that kind of like or maybe people who are a bit you know have that kind of cheeky conniving banter but i don't really get that feeling from Annie Mac. she always kind of strikes me as somebody very warm very easy to talk to very personable um very grateful very considerate you don't get that kind of entitled divery vibe from her so it's really surprising that this kind of happened it really is sad to be honest and you'd imagine too in a space like here that they maybe have the footage of who took it but maybe they don't maybe they don't have cameras that kind of you know can pick up stuff from that place or maybe it's too dark but regardless in a statement Annie Mac said the music on that usb is truly precious and really important to me it's years and years of collected music from shows i've done all over the world and it would mean so much to me if you could just do me the grace of returning it there'll be no repercussions i just want the music back thank you annie the music can be anonymously returned to lockheed management blah 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 the new series starts with um has uh, people raving from 7 p.m until midnight with tickets so this particular evening selling out in minutes so the really sad thing about this is that most likely this is a fan a real hardcore fan because i don't imagine anyone else will be going to here which is a particular venue right they have specific type of nights there and going to a night that annie mac is promoting if you're not an absolute hardcore fan of hers you maybe listen to her radio show back in the day you listen to her voice every morning every afternoon whatever it may be and then you go and do that that's a bit messed up to be completely fair as briefly said in a series before midnight is a chance for me to play long dj sets all my favorite records those ones that spark joy and a chance for you to have all the fun and euphoria and the wild abandon you still need um but get a good night's sleep 
Yesterday, she took to social media to announce that 10 more before midnight shows around the UK and Ireland with tickets available on Friday. Check out dates below. So she's still, you know, powering through and deciding to put on the events anyway. So big up her for still being a good sport about it. But damn, man, those USBs. And like I said, there was a story about it happening to Etap Kyle. I think he was in... It must have been Burger main room, which is crazy because for the most part, if I'm not mistaken, from what I remember, because again, I've not been really up the front of Bergheim. I always kind of around the back. I'm always standing on the blue. There's these really nice boxes that you can stand on these kind of platforms. You can go crazy and do your thing on. Or there's a side that's really cool because you can have the music just blaring through your flipping eardrums and causing you lots of hearing problems probably later on in life. But you just stand around the back. So I've never really seen too close to it. But if I'm not mistaken, the Bergheim DJ booth on the main floor is quite elevated and it's covered you can't actually see the decks you just can see the person's head but you can't actually see the decks and it kind of how it's set up is cruel because there's no way to kind of just stand and gawk you kind of have to dance because you can't really see much performance unless you get really really close to the front so i would love to know how that person was able to try because if i remember correctly they tried to take um etap kyle's usbs out of the cdj as he's playing so I'm assuming, you know, the songs must have flipping stopped or something happened or maybe he noticed straight away because there's some guy's hand literally on his flipping USB and then um, Secure is able to come in and chuck the person out but he nearly got his stuff jacked. So people or that person was willing to take the risk because, you know, Etap Car is a very highly regarded DJ, probably has a lot of, you know, dubs and, you know, stuff that he probably plays in clubs that's never been released because, you know, maybe they can't clear samples or stuff he's just planning on releasing soon because bloody hell man in dance music people love to tease they can cock tease a tune for years and years and years and you're just going to listen to it on shitty flipping iphone recordings on instagram but you're never going to actually be able to buy it so maybe that person was so desperate they were willing to you know um risk the wrath of those bird Bergheim bouncers who are nice um the security guys but when something pops off i've seen them you know manhandle people and it's not nice you know when they're nice they're nice but if they have to be a little bit rough and you know send a stern warning they'll let you know while go on so i could imagine you know you're getting your arm twisted you might be getting some thumps in the back of your head as you escorted outside and told to never come back again in your bar type of stuff so mad risk to take but i think this is ultra scummy personally for me um because like you said that this this event is made in these you know focus on people who generally can't have you know kind of the freedom to maybe go out after tour because they have family or have responsibilities or maybe they're just old and just want to change how they do party and you're going out for this special event you're going to dance with somebody that you probably got to know over the years and then you're doing something like that is really gross it's kind of reminds of people that you remind to your you kind of invite to your house party and then suddenly stuff goes missing in your house and it's only people that you know right friends or friends whatever it may be it always kind of hits a bit harder so i'd imagine if you're Mac, maybe if you're playing somewhere random and this happens cool but for a night you specifically did to help people out and to kind of you know bring out a different community in the dance or just to fill the fill a void out there and if this happened, it must really sting. Um, I don't know about London, but, you know, I don't have much faith that it's going to get returned, to be fair, because people here are, people are hungry, right? We're in a, we're in a state of real um, disharmony and real stress and real annoyance and people are just doing whatever, whatever, just to kind of survive and truck on another day. I don't really know what they're going to do to the tune I'm selling. I don't know. Maybe the USB is worth a lot of money. Who knows? But I don't have much, I don't have much faith it's going to be returned. But if it does get returned, amazing but it is something that i've kind of heard happening you know a couple of times here and there i'm not too sure if it's the uh, consequence of djs not releasing tunes early enough if it's people legitimately hungry people you know spazzing out and allowing the drugs and alcohol to get you know too much of a grip of them and they go crazy or if it's just people just being cryptomaniacs and just taking stuff for the sake of taking it but either way hope she does get her stuff back hope she does get her stuff back and then to move on, we've got this other story. This is courtesy of Mixmag again. Big up Mixmag, you're doing absolutely fantastic work. And this is regarding this night called Techno Mate, which I'm a really, really big fan of. I still haven't been to one. I bought a couple of tickets a couple of times, but I didn't end up going because, you know, I was in upstream by my last minute. Or I think I might end up going to the Color Factory a couple of times, but I've seen it around and I really like the look of it overall, right? It looks pretty cool. And there's this headline here that says, what's the party providing a safer space for London's Flinter community techno mate? And the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because I feel like this kind of speaks on the topic I was speaking on beforehand 
regarding this friction that's existing right now in nightlife that I don't think people are talking about but I think it might end up getting worse especially when you consider the video that I spoke about the other day regarding somebody recording somebody dancing and having a good time in fabric and basically taking the piss out of them online mainly because you know they were scantily clad but also maybe because they may be you know adjacent to the lgbtq queer flinter community so there's that kind of friction that's happening at the moment where these two different opposing types of communities or scenes in nightlife are basically butting heads in the same places because you know in a weird way or unfortunately or not so unfortunately the flinter queer lgbt community their club nights are becoming incredibly popular you think of adonis you think of inferno you think of Budikai, all these amazing parties that are predominantly you know centered and kind of targeted for or provided or providing a safe space for those type of people from that community that i mentioned before are now becoming quote unquote mainstream they're now doing events in like e1 fabric all these type of places they've been invited to do festivals and whatnot going forward and it's becoming big time big big time i think if i'm not mistaken did i see a flyer for technomate that they're going to be playing at this festival that's again um targeted towards the queer lgbtq flinter community and i'm pretty sure the event's happening in like printworks or something so it's clearly going up every single time right every you know every season it seems to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger so i'm wondering what they're going to do about trying to maintain and keeping that community as tight as it is and making sure the vibe is right because one of the reasons why i like to go to these events is the fact that it's a legit party as you can see from the pictures as i'm going to be scrolling down it's one of the only places i've been to where i've seen legit club kids outside of maybe going to forward and this is one thing that i've never really kind of got and why i maybe was drawn to going to berlin for so often right i think it was one year and like maybe 2019 2018 where i went to berlin maybe like six times in one year just to go and rave and party and come back and stuff and most of the time was because i couldn't get that feeling of like going into a random place somewhere and finding all these amazing weird looking people who are expressing themselves in all these cool and unique ways dancing to really forward thinking underground dance music with some sprinkling of some hits here that you might hear you know from time to time and it's open all night long all morning long kind of vibe you didn't really get it anywhere else then suddenly i don't know what happened in a pandemic or whatnot suddenly all these little scenes start popping up and you start to see actual club kids out and about and you're like whoa this is becoming a little thing unfolds starts to kick off and you know unfolds going to a whole another level that's essentially the place where all the elite kind of club kids go but there's so many different little parties popping up all over the place that it kind of makes going to Berlin all the time a bit redundant. So that's why I haven't been going all the time because I've been literally serviced at home. But as I mentioned before, it's quite difficult to see a scenario where the people, let's use an example, you know, the people that go to like a fuse would really correlate or really mesh well with the people who go to techno mate. But we're getting to that point now where these parties are becoming mainstream where adonis is like attracting a more hetero crowd even though it is a party you know predominantly made for gay people and then it's slowly but surely becoming bigger you want the big bigger you want to book bigger artists if you do run the thing you're not sure how to make that manage you want to pay people uh you want to put you want to put bigger and better productions on all these things are slowly but surely going to take away from the essence of what you originally started off with which must be really troubling to kind of come to grips with if that's your thing and you're part of that community you've seen it grow from the ground up i can be a good example of that right i, I was one of the i went to the fold party the first one when they properly opened in like what 2018 and stuff and i've seen it kind of evolve and go forward over time but it's still been able to somehow keep the core of what it does even though it does some random nights here and there just to kind of fill out the events calendar as you do running a business at the at its core it still services the freaks and the weirdos so i'm really interested to see what technomate will do to make sure they're servicing their community and keeping it you know you're not going to ever have a 100 percent safe space but keeping it relatively safe because you know we already see what happens with us with flipping no phones policies and clubs we don't really handle that what stuff well in the uk we kind of you know we need to have our phones out no one really kind of listens to that sort of vibe and whatever it may be we don't really have that culture at all really people are trying to implement it our fabric and stuff and it's working well but overall it's not something that's ever going to really take off i don't feel and then you also think about just in general when it comes to door picking because that's part of a 
main thing of like screening people and making sure the ones who are coming in actually get and understand what you're about and how can you do that in london people just don't understand screening they don't get it whatsoever they just you know anticipate if they've got money in their pocket that they can go into your party or they can you know come into your business and you know buy your wares or whatever it may be so it's pretty difficult to convince them that you know hey you're going to be screened your ticket doesn't come the ticket doesn't guarantee entry it's quite difficult to make that work but there's something about these parties that I love and I'm a big fan of as you can see from the pictures I'm scrolling by there are some just amazing cool interesting people there who are expressing themselves in some cool and interesting ways there's always interesting DJs playing who you haven't necessarily heard of before the music's fresh everything about it is what you would imagine what actual club culture should be about especially underground club culture but like I was saying it's just it's becoming so popular everybody's actually understanding that they are the ones who are putting on the great fun parties and maybe it's kind of a full circle moment because you imagine you know some of these scenes and some of these genres that we listen to essentially popped off because of people within the flinter queer lgbtq plus community making it what it is and kind of pushing it forward and those spaces were provided for them to be a safe space a bastion where they can kind of go relax chill and be themselves and now they're having to slowly but surely open the doors to the wider public who necessarily maybe not get it and the vibe is going to be all off so i'm interested to see what they do going forward um but yeah let's see how it kind of rocks um going forward and i'm eager to see how it kind of evolves really really am and i'm definitely going to go to the next one because i haven't been here before but i'll put a link in the show notes before so you can check out the article yourself but it's a really cool article i recommend you check it out it is called what's the party providing a safer space for london's flinter community techno mate techno mate has rapidly grown to a pillar of education and a queer representation of london's techno scene so big up mix mag for featuring them big up mix mag then of course we have to talk about the news has been absolutely all over the place concerning the whole megan the stallion tory lanes and kelsey issue the shooting did it happen how did it happen why did it happen so far there's been a lot of updates in terms of what happened in court um i read through a couple of tweets here this is taken from megan cuniff who tweeted as follows um, the court takes a 90 minute break at noon so we're really only going to hear probably 45 minutes of testimony let's roll on from there it says here that trial is on no yeah but kelsey really struggled when deputy k asked her about tory threatening to shoot her while they were in escalate before megan exited the sh um, was shot she did not want to answer uh, but yeah let, let's actually let me put the other bit i think the other guy maybe has a it's a bit more concise so i can maybe go through it um let me see is it this one i think it might be this guy ba, 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 ba. but essentially what we know for so far let me just let me go for the tweets because i think these are we always know um yeah okay cool let's just go for this one so this is a courtesy of a guy called james queely you can check him out on twitter it's james queely lat um, and he says as follows Kelsey Harris testimony at Tory Lane's trial began with her showing up with an attorney and asking for immunity this has been a big bombshell of the day basically her coming in asking for immunity because you know that you know raises loads of red flags in terms of who actually was responsible for the shooting and why she's asking for immunity if she didn't do nothing wrong it was granted even after the DA swore that they had no intent to prosecute her no explanation as to what the immunity is for no comment from Lane's defense attorney and Harris and her attorney fled the hallway before they could be approached by reporters Kelsey spent less than 40 minutes on the stand saying a lot of her memory of the party was blurry because of the alcoholic consumption she accused Megan of lying about her and called accusation that she shot Megan ridiculous she generally painted Megan as a drunk and acting out at the party before the fight in the SUV that per that predated the shooting key moment came when the dda kathy tar asked if lanes was threatened to shoot kelsey and kelsey took the fifth so it's another detail i don't really know nothing about this idea that tory lanes threatened to shoot kelsey in some sort of argument that they had maybe it was on a day maybe it was another day we, we don't really not too sure about that the court broke um court broke not long after this one two key points whether Lanes threatened her, whether Lanes called her and Meg bitches and hoes, 
Kelsey has not responsive until DDA reminded her that her that she confirmed both things in September 2022 interview with the prosecution. Court resume at 1.30. One more thing, Kelsey was granted use immunity, meaning the DA's office can't use her testimony in the case of prosecute her for a crime. It does not mean that they are declining to prosecute her for any criminal conduct they may be aware of. So it looks like it's a particular use immunity. It doesn't cover everything. This explanation is according to the source of the ton of legal experience. Her attorney asked for a transactional immunity, which could have been broader. It was not granted. So basically, the only update we've had that's really been a big bombshell is obviously Kelsey, Megan's former friend who was there at the event that they went to that led to the shooting, essentially saying, hey, I want immunity. And then people are now speculating as to why she's asking for immunity. Maybe she was involved in the shooting. We don't really know. But essentially you know hearing most of this story and kind of covering it or watching it from afar the only lesson really to be learned from this is that try to be a really good house guest or a house party guest or a gathering guest because she kept saying it's not a party when they went to kylie kylie minogue kylie jenner's house it was a gathering try to be a good guest and it's really difficult to be one i try to pride myself to be the best house party guest ever and you know i try and bring some stuff i try and bring some drinks but i also don't outstay my welcome when it's time to go home i go home and i don't even wait for people to say hey go that's usually a sign that you've probably overstayed your welcome and just being a good you know a good vibe not trying to hit on everybody that's in there dancing having a good time getting people drinks maybe going on a drinks run with someone and just generally being a a good company is really 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 important because from what we've seen so far it sounds like what kelsey's saying in her version of events is that when when she when megan did arrive at the party or megan was there already no she was there before and then megan arrived later when she arrived she was really drunk she was acting out already being a bit belligerent just being an annoying drunk which everybody you know isn't out to be i'm sure we all have friends in our little social group who can kind of be a little bit extra when they start getting a little bit liquored up megan went a bit too over the top kylie didn't like it and the vibes were basically saying hey you guys need to leave i think kylie and her friend decide hey we should go before we get told to leave they leave but then they leave tori behind because he's having a thing with kylie he's basically trying to shoot his shot i'm assuming and maybe she's entertaining maybe she isn't but he's okay he doesn't mind to stay because he came later then they convince him to leave no then they leave the two girls um and then somehow megan says oh i left my slipper back there and they go back to get the slipper but you know that's really code to get back tori because i'm guessing she was a bit pissed off and jealous that maybe he was back there or maybe she was just annoyed that she got chucked out who knows she goes there something occurs inside the place that causes tori and meg to come out and be angry at each other so some sort of argument who knows what happened they come outside and then once they come outside and get in a car an argument starts again and that's what leads to the shooting so we still don't know who actually pulled the trigger, even though we have, I think, gunpowder residue on Tori and Kelsey. For some reason, they didn't test Megan, maybe because she was the victim. I'm not really too sure. But so far, whatever version of events that Megan laid out, we haven't really heard anything to corroborate it. The only thing we know for sure is that she got shot. We don't know if it was directly, if it was shrapnel, but we know definitely a gun went off and some whatever that bullet hit, it hit her foot and she bled. Um, but we haven't had anyone corroborate the dance bitch dance we haven't had anybody say directly they saw tori do it so it's a bit he said she said which maybe can maybe explain why a lot of people don't really report especially women don't report instances of violence against them in any way shape or form but i think one of the main takeaways from this should be an encouragement and a reminder to most women if they do go through such traumatic you know instances to make sure that they report it straight away and that they stick to what actually happened in terms of whatever claim that you put out there because i think the fact that megan from her side said that she was trying to protect tori and didn't want him to die or get shot or anything at the time and that's why she said she didn't get shot she stepped on glass then she changed her mind later on where she had an interview with oprah's friend gail king people immediately started to cast aspersion and doubt on her story myself included because the message just kept changing but it could be legitimately that she was trying to look out for the guy then later on when he started doing what he was doing when they started doing you know industry games behind the scenes she got pissed off hey i'm not why i'm trying to protect him he's a piece of shit and then she joined to tell the truth by the time she told the truth everybody saw her as a bit of a liar so it kind of made things weird so in general like i said before number one lesson from this try and be a good house party guest if you're getting a bit too intoxicated a bit too liquored up just get yourself an uber and leave and the other thing also 
is just if you're a woman for sure if you go through something as traumatic as this you must report it you just must report it as early as possible and stick to your story no matter what sometimes the unfortunate side of it is that sometimes even if you do that it doesn't mean somebody will get prosecuted but it will give you a far better chance for that to happen because so far what i'm seeing and the evidence laid out i can't see a scenario where tory is found guilty of shooting megan there's just too much doubt um there's too much confusion there's too much conjecture there's too many different stories floating about there and you know basically kelsey was basically kelsey was megan's former friend has basically taken a stand in this you know essentially gone against everything that megan said in terms of version of events it was a little bit you know a little bit personal because she came on the stand according to the reporters and was very emotional and i think she said something like oh i don't even know why i'm here uh, you know so clearly they are still very much on bad terms to the point where you know even in this distressing moment where you'd maybe think there'd be a bit more solidarity between them being women and whatnot and going through that experience together even though Kelsey wasn't sure you'd think maybe she'd be like you know what even though I don't mess with this girl I'm just going to tell the truth of what happened and have her back but she hasn't done that she's got had all this time she's moved on she's got a kid she's got a new relationship everything's kind of changed in her life and clearly that hasn't you know time hasn't healed those wounds and she came in and basically wanted to it felt like embarrass um you know to, uh, megan exposed maybe the lies and whatnot and i don't think it was anything to do with tory personally i don't think that hush money thing is legit from my experience i think the fact that they were also sloppy with this whole affair anyway because it feels like to me if, if anyone was asked me what happened i felt like something did happen with the gun but i felt like they all agreed in that car or when they were in there when whatever stuff was going on that they weren't going to say anything i think that's what they all agreed it came to just some you know kind of weird group agreement that they were going to keep it themselves but then police were already called and then when the police were called and they were all taken separately because i think mega went to a hospital and maybe kelsey came after or you know tory got booked and went to prison for a bit or jail and then he got bailed out and then the labels and managers started coming involved and they wanted to start doing a bit of damage control that's when things change but i feel like my personal opinion is that something definitely went down and then they kind of agreed to stick to what their story is but then as time progressed and feelings changed and maybe people sobered up and were like no actually that guy was being a prick to me fuck him and then you know whatever happened and not you know maybe as well she could have just make it could have just been drunk who knows she could have just been plain old drunk and high and whatever it may be and she thought she saw tori shooting but he didn't and that's okay also but I think the main point, like I said before, is to be a good house guest. And also, if you're a woman and you get into a situation like that, you just must report it as soon as possible and stick to your story no matter what. Because it looks like people do go out of their way, especially in court. So especially just when you have to rely on witnesses and stuff, you don't, you can't really hold any expectation that they're going to corroborate your story or they're going to help your case because it could literally change like that. Because I don't think anybody had any idea Kelsey was going to turn up and basically... Um, go against everything that Megan said and also ask for that plea deal um, or that flipping immunity thing no one had any idea she played that really close to her chest so that was obviously a move to kind of make sure that she kind of gets away with it or doesn't get charged for whatever she's afraid of getting charged for but yeah let's see how that plays out the other thing to talk about is also that Gunner has been freed Gunner is free which is quite shocking to me considering how many times um, they were denying his bail and basically making it seem like he was a major part of this RICO charge that brought down um, YSL and were basically saying that, hey, this is a gang and they're responsible for all these homicides. They're a menace to society. There's no way we're going to let this guy out. And now all of a sudden we're in a position where he's now out and free. And it looks like from what we can see of this statement, courtesy of WSB TV, that Gunner may have snitched and it's going to be an interesting thing for people in hip-hop to mull over and debate and make and kind of make sense of because essentially this is the same tactic approach that 6 9 used but 6 9 was lambasted for and if anything for me it's no surprise because I've always said or I, I'm always aware of the fact that when it comes to being somebody who is a public figure it's probably more important to be well liked and well regarded than it is anything else like maybe the opposite would be to be hated those are usually some of the biggest um 
you know, jewels or secret powers that you can have to make yourself really successful, where you really split opinion, whether you're super likable or really hated, they will go a long way in terms of helping you propel your career forward. And because 6 9 always had a terrible reputation and no one really liked him, it was it made a lot of sense when he ended up snitching in his case that people were legitimately on his head top and have never really let him forget it since. But to be fair to him, he also said a lot more people would snitch in my position um, given the circumstances around it if they were put in that position. It's really different to kind of speak about it from the outside looking in until you're actually in that room negotiating for your life. You know, you've been in, you know, you've been denied bail, I think in Gunner's case four times. You're facing a RICO charge. You could be anywhere between like five to 10 years in prison. Uh, you know, it's looking crazy, especially if you didn't do anything, right? Legitimately, you feel like you didn't do nothing. It can be hard to take that oath of like being in a gang and like you know say no comment whatsoever and take me back to my cell when all your when you know your, your all your life is ahead of you and you're basically putting it at risk for a gang that you maybe didn't really play an active part in but for me if you're just asking me for my opinion this is definitely snitching there's no way to go kind of go around it if you are in a gang and if you are ripping something that's given you some level of clout and you know what these guys are getting up to behind the scenes and you know what they do and you have this silent agreement that you're going to be a part of it to further your music career to improve your reputation and they go down for something that's just part of doing business you have to go down also i don't understand this idea of like you know oh i'm a civilian now just no 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 you were here when the things were good you have to also be here when things go bad but for whatever reason this is probably the safest time to do what Gunner's doing. I don't feel like most people really care. I'm sure there'll be some guys in the music industry who are really about that life that are probably never going to speak to him again. But I think for the majority of people, mostly his fans, he'll be fine. Nothing will happen really going forward. He'll be completely fine. But let me read the article anyway because I think it's really interesting. It's his courtesy of WSB TV2. It says Atlanta rapper Gunner has been released from jail after pleaded guilty to a racketeering conspiracy charge in a sweeping gang indictment against him, rapper Young Fuck, and several other alleged members of the Young Slime, Young Slime Life criminal street gang. Channel 2 investigates, investigative sorry, reporter Mark Wine was the only television journalist in the courtroom Wednesday as Gunner, whose real name is Sergio Kitchens, faced judge. A lot of people are saying, why doesn't he just use his name, Sergio Kitchens? Because it's actually cooler than Gunner, right? A lot of people would say that, but I, lo I love the, I love the, I love the Gunner name. Gunner Wanna is one of my faves, actually. So I'm a little bit, I have a little bit of a bias going into this because I just want to hear good music. Um, the rapper entered, uh, the, in, entered a negotiation plea, sorry, entered a negotiated plea known as an Alfred plea in which the defendant doesn't admit he committed a crime, but acknowledges that in his best interest to plead guilty. The charge Gunner faced was one of count of conspiracy to violate the Racketeer Influence Corruption Act. Gunner was sentenced to five years with one year served in prison. The one year sentence was commuted to time served. The four year remaining balance on his sentence has been suspended and he'll be subject to a special conditions, including 500 hours of community service. So essentially he'll be on probation for four years, which is pretty tough so he's gonna have to be on really good behavior for the next four years and if he isn't he's gonna be in big trouble and might end up back in prison again after the sentence came down rapper released a statement saying the following while i have always agreed to be truthful i want to make it perfectly clear that i do not have that i have not made any statements have not been interviewed have not cooperated have not agreed to testify or be a witness for any for any or against any party in the case and have absolutely no intention of being involved in the trial process in any way. Interesting statement to make upon your release, right? To kind of make it known that you're not a snitch. That's kind of giving me snitch, right? It's kind of, it's, it goes back to that term, um, um, doth protest too much. That's what it's kind of feeling like. Despite saying that, he will not testify. It is the condition of Gunner's trial that he testifies if he's called, though he can claim the Fifth Amendment. So that is obviously in place, the same thing that What's Her Face Kelsey was doing in the Megan Stallion and Tory trial. Gunner, Young Fug, and 26 were arrested um, in May in a sweeping gang indictment that claimed YSL was a violent street gang. We know this. In his statement Wednesday, um, Gunner said that he joined YSL in 2016. He didn't consider it a gang, but more like a group of people from Metro Atlanta who had a common interest in artistic aspirations. My focus of YSL was entertainment, rap artists who wrote and performed music that exaggerated and glorified urban life in the black community. Ah, oh, he's copying, please, man. Gunner. Gunner said he cherishes his association with YSL music and always will. 
So maybe the condition of his release is that he can't be, you know, a tr- he can't be associated with YSL anymore. It may be even a thing where he can't actually hang out with Young Thug. Maybe a little bit similar to what was happening to Little Dirk and King Vaughn for a while, where they couldn't really be around, around each other, even though I'm pretty sure they probably were hanging around in secret. But it looks like he's going to be off of YSL when he goes forward with his career. Um, during Gunner's court appearance on Wednesday, the judge read out of stipulations of the plea agreement that Gunner then responded to. The rapper swore that he has no personal knowledge that members of the associate of YSL have committed crimes in favor of a gang. Oh my God, it says he has. I read it wrong. Oh, this is definitely snitching then, isn't it? The rapper swore that he has personal knowledge that the members or associates of YSL have committed crimes in favor of a gang, but seemed to distance himself from YSL the gang versus YSL the label. I recognize and accept and deeply regret that my talent and music indirectly furthered YSL the gang to the detriment of my community. YSL as a gang must end. <sighs> Jesus Christ, man. I'm so interested to see how the hip hop blogs receive this and how podcasters receive this and, you know, commentators on YouTube and whatnot, because this will be interesting. And even other artists, because Gunner's very, very well liked. He's very well regarded. Young Fug is also, you can see the reception and the reverence they still have. Even Young Fug, even though he's in jail, you know, Meek Mill did a post about him recently. And, you know, it just seemed like they have a lot of friends in the industry maybe because of how they get down you know on the streets but also just because of their talent and their popularity in general so i'll be interested to see how people react to this because this sounds like to me somebody who cooperated so if you're gonna rip into six nine for doing what he did even though what six nine did was probably way more egregious especially you know sending out that guy to do a hit on chief keith i think it was i forgot who the guy was and then going and stitching on him in the court and then getting time off and him still being in jail crazy but this is just basically the same thing on paper. There's no real difference. And he's publicly disavowing them in the same way that 6 9 did, actually, if you think about it. Before 6 9 got arrested, one of the main things he did was book that Breakfast Club interview where he essentially said, I'm not in a gang anymore and exposed the, you know, the whole kidnapping thing and how they're stealing money and this idea that the gang was messing with his baby mom, which is why he was, why he potentially would snitch, like all this sort of stuff. So it's the same sort of blueprint, the same sort of steps he's going through you know disassociating off of the gang distance stuff from it all this sort of stuff oh god especially after that crime stoppers thing he went through a while back right where this video was uncovered of gonna doing a crime stoppers doc you know advert about if you see a crime call and all this whatever it may be and it made him seem crazy and people made excuses for him because he was really young he may have been under 16 or something at the time now it's going to be really hard to make excuses for him if you care about that sort of stuff i as a fan of his music don't necessarily care because i'm just going to hear more albums and see him perform live because one thing i was really glad about even young folks the same thing selfishly i was like man i've never seen them perform live and now they're going to be locked up for 20 plus years but selfishly it's a good thing but i think if you are somebody that cares a lot about the streets and cares about you know about what about gang culture and in terms of you know honoring your word in terms of being in a gang and all that sort of stuff then you're going to be a bit disappointed with this Gunner also attested in a plea deal that he was in a car with Young Thug, whose real name is Jeffrey Williams, when officers pulled him over and found hydrocodone, methamphetamine, and a firearm inside. According to the plea agreement, Gunn uh, claimed the gun and drugs weren't his. It's unclear if anyone else was in the car at the time. So in a car that includes Gunner and Young Thug that gets pulled over by police, and they then find inside of that car after doing a sweep, hydrocodone methamphetamine and a firearm gunner says it's not mine if there's only two people in there plus a driver then who's who else is it per the plea agreement the rapper also has to perform 500 hours of community service substantial portion of which will require him to speak to young people about the hazards of or more immorality of gangs and gang violence oh, oh god almighty don't get me wrong, way more tougher, seasoned, grizzled veterans in flipping gang law history have snitched, right? Some of the biggest capos in the world have snitched. Leaders, inform whatever, you know, hitmen, assassins, whatever has snitched for sure. It's just wild because I felt like they were going to be the exception and maybe hold it down and prove everybody wrong because YSL is a family all this type of stuff you remember that massive that amazing portrait they all took for the recent compilation tape where they're all seated around each other and it kind of feels like a bit of a 
organized crime family that just gets it they're kind of you know similar to maybe what happened to gs9 and whatnot but now we're seeing that whole gs9 thing with um bobby schmurder and you know what's his name uh, uh rowdy rebel that's an exception most people don't take time to help their friends that don't do as much time and staying with them at the same time whatever it may be people don't you know people usually take plea deals and you know cop out to people and whatnot or cop up to crimes and snitch on their friends so that whole gs9 bobby schmurder thing is very very unique it's a very one of situations i think for the most part when you're sitting down there especially for gunner think about him if he's legitimately not involved in the in the gang side of things which i can't really debate on because i don't know but if he is and he was just enjoying himself at home and having some lobsters and some fucking whatever else rich people stuff they do where you're maybe cleaning your rolex and whatnot on your bus downs and then suddenly you get arrested for this big sweeping rico indictment and you have nothing involved in it and you get denied your bail you know four times and you can't appeal it anymore and you're sitting in a prison and you are just enjoying you know the one that thing that broke my heart was that i think maybe a week or maybe some weeks before he got arrested he was in flipping italy promoting emiliano pucci and you know there were the whole pushing p thing and going out to europe and connecting with these fashion brands and actually it felt like he was taking the next step in his career to being a legitimate star star and then suddenly you're in prison it could be hard to kind of handle all those type of things so i don't you know i don't deny it that that probably played in his decision making process but I don't know, man. If people were given six nine hassle, this has to be the same level because this is probably worse because he's such hus- how high profile he is. Given that six nine was so young and didn't really have that long of a career. <sighs> anyway, it continues. He's not allowed to carry a gun during the term of his sentence. If he violates the term of his plea agreement, the district attorney has a right to revoke his suspended sentence. Alleged YSL founder Walter Murphy also negotiated a plea deal and indictment on Tuesday, according to his lawyer. So I'd never even heard of this guy, Walter Murphy. So he did a deal as well. Hudson said Murphy has already been released and he will not testify about the conduct of any other individual defendant. Hudson said the ways that Murphy had changed his life since he got out of prison was a major factor in the deal. Wow. <laughs> So essentially, they're all hanging, flipping young fuck to dry. He's the only one that's going to be in there holding it down all by himself while all of his friends are out there living their best life. Man, being a gang is long, isn't it? Like, I've been fascinated with gang culture for the longest time. I think like most heterosexual males out there. But one of the things that always kind of deterred me was the idea that you couldn't really run or operate a sophisticated criminal network without involving other people. If you wanted to, you know, ascend the flipping ranks and kind of really assert your dominance in a particular area, you would have to recruit more people, recruit muscle, recruit foot on the foot soldiers, wherever it may be, pushers, blah, blah, blah. And the more people you involve in a conspiracy, in a crime, in a gang, the more kind of weak points you have for people to attack, especially police, right? Because essentially it feels like the police's plan all along was to have somebody like a gunner sit down for a while who they know deep down probably wasn't involved in the criminal side of things but because he was closely associated with them and closely linked to them most likely he could ascertain the fact that they are a gang because the whole thing they're fighting for is that YSL isn't a gang it's a label so if if it's not if it's a label then you can't put them under the RICO Act because they're just musicians but if it is a gang then of course the RICO goes through so that's a big part of the case so if they could get gunner to sit down a kind of periphery member but it's also closely attached or associated with young folk because young folk essentially changed that man's life and kind of gave him a career on a plate and basically helped to build him up you know in terms of what he was doing it made sense what the police were doing in terms of their investigation and the way to kind of put him in the corner have him sit down deny all his um bail requests four back-to-back ones that he wasn't able to get even though the only crime that he was actually you know accused of at the time i think for we read through the charges was that he was in music videos throwing up the i don't know the slat and doing the whole slime life whatever sign they do and that's what he basically charged with so they knew that they could put him in a corner sweat him out a bit present him with a plea and then he'd probably take it because you know he legitimately doesn't want to be in prison he's not built for that life he didn't do anything wrong blah 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 so it kind of worked out in their favor but it's a bit pissed for young fuck because he's legitimately there on his own sitting down and doing time for people who don't really give a fuck about him which is pretty brutal but also a good reflection of how horrible it is to actually be in a gang like for real it doesn't actually go and work in any kind of conducive way going forward but yeah man 
I don't know, man. Um, hold your head up, innit, young folk? I guess for the most part, I'm happy Gunner's out again. Like I said, selfishly being a fan, I want him to be out so I can listen to new music going forward. But I am kind of gutted for the guy having to sit down there for a long time. And, you know, there is no kind of end in sight, really, it feels like for him going forward. But I hope it works out. I really, really, really hope it works out. That has been the Action Zinger Show episode number 631. Thanks again for tuning in. It's been a pleasure to have your company. If it's your first time tuning into the show, you know what to do. Smash that like, hit, hit subscribe, all that good stuff. If you're listening via the podcast app, then of course just share it. All that good stuff would be greatly appreciated. There's a link to my website, agusnozinga.com, in the description too. If you want to find out more things regarding myself, you can also contact me there. There's an email button if you want to reach out and all that good stuff. And yeah, man, I'll see you guys again on the other side, innit? If you're listening to the audio podcast, of course, you'll hear my tune of the day. But if you're watching just a video portion of it, it'll just fade to black. And I'll see you guys again very very soon take care peace